Oh, here you are, boy. Oh, there they are. Good work, Peter. Good work. Hey, there are no labels on these cans. Why else you get 50% off? How can you tell what's inside? Never thought of that. But must be a way. I'm sure there is. Just out of idle curiosity, tell me, what's in this? Ripe olives. You sure? Positive. I know sound of ripe olives when I hear it. How salmon get in here? It's the spawning season. You see, they swim upstream until they find a can of ripe olives, and then they mate. You made a pretty sharp deal, Peter. Pretty sharp. Maybe we can get these cans x-rayed. What's in those? We're looking for some dog food for Jasper. Don't give up, Jasper. We get lucky yet. Tomato juice, apple sauce, succotash, pickled artichokes. This is swan. Very delicious. <laughs> nothing like being organized, I always say. And the reason why I always say it is because nothing around here is ever organized. <laughs> now look, you two. Never have I seen such utter chaos. This is the most impossible, disorganized, slovenly... I I'll get it. No, no, no. I get it. Now, hereafter, I'd like a little system in this house. I don't like coming home to 200 unlabeled cans. <laughs> I'm not through yet. But Uncle Bentley, the door. I met a girl on the plane. You could take lessons from her, dear. I only wish I knew I could... <laughs> well, hello. We were just talking about you. Good morning, Mr. Gregg. Oh, this is extraordinary. Uh, this is my niece, Kelly, and my houseboy, Peter. This is Hello. Miss Trent. How do you do? I was just lecturing them on efficiency and mentioned your name. How, uh, how'd you happen to find me? Your address is on your briefcase. Oh. Now, may I have mine? Oh, you, you took mine by mistake. You got off first. <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's an ill wind that blows nobody any good. At least it brought you to my doorstep. Very nice to have seen you. Now, may I please have my briefcase? I have a very heavy schedule this morning. Only if you promise to come back for dinner. What's going on? Peter! What? What happened? What can of dog food on the bottom? Peter and his bargains. He bought 200 cans of food with no labels on them. Oh, well, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. No problem. This would be fruit cocktail. Would you mind opening it, Peter? Fruit cocktail, all right. It sure is. Well, that's amazing. Asparagus, stewed tomatoes, boiled potatoes. And here's your dog food. <laughs> this lady make fortune in Las Vegas. <laughs> now, it really isn't guesswork. Well, how did you know? Well, cans are marked very much like chocolates. You can tell what's inside by the markings on the bottom of the can. For example, three rings indicate a vegetable, two rings of fruit, etc. I'll have my secretary send you a memo on it. Don't need memo. I remember everything. A uh, memo might be very helpful, Miss Brad. <laughs> <laughs> of course. You know, you, you must stay to dinner. Thanks to you, we know what we're going to eat. <laughs> well, it does seem a shame to waste all this. I don't believe in waste. Good. And, Kelly, you'll find you'll never forget a phone number if you practice mnemonics. That's memorizing by association, dear. I'll send you our pamphlet on it. That's very kind of you. Well, it's lucky for all of us that I met Melissa, isn't it? It sure is. <laughs> Tell you, this whole household could function a little more efficiently. Well, since you mention it, having dinner out here in the patio was lovely. But it is wasted motion for Peter. Oh, really? Well, if you had dinner in the dining room, Peter would only have to take, well, I'd say about eight steps from the kitchen to the table. Well, there must be over 40 steps from the kitchen to here. Have you ever thought about that? Uh, not recently. <laughs> well, just multiply the number of Peter's steps by the number of dinners you have out here. Well, you can see how much time you save him. And he could use that time for a hobby. Well, you could fire the gardener and let Peter do the gardening. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That will be my cab. Your cab? 
Yes, I ordered one for 10.30. Well, let me dismiss it, and we'll finish our coffee, and I'll drive you to the hotel. Oh, thank you, but there's no reason for you to drive all the way downtown and back again. I know you have to be up early. Good night, Kelly. Remember, mnemonics. The mnemonics. <laughs> no, no, that's M-N. The M is silent. Thank you for a lovely evening. Well, it was our pleasure. Thank you. I'll call you at the hotel, if I may. You may. Good night, Melissa. Good night. Did you hear that? Didn't want me to drive her home because I have to get up early tomorrow morning. Now, name me one girl who is that considerate. Name me one girl, give me hobby of gardening. <laughs> Most unusual, really. Most unusual. <laughs> You know, Bentley, I didn't think it was possible to have so much fun on a business trip. We haven't begun to have fun. You haven't seen Mulholland Drive by day, Malibu by night. And I haven't seen the third act of that play that we should be sitting at right now. You really want to go back in that stuffy theater? Well, we paid for the tickets. But if you'd rather not. Tell you what, I'll let the vice president decide. I'll give you five seconds to make a decision. I've already made it. Good. What is it? I've decided to marry you. Marry me? Now, I know how you treasure your bachelorhood, but the fact is you need someone. Someone to organize your life, your home. Marry me? Oh, darling, stop fighting it. You need me. Now, tell me, how do you suppose I worked up from receptionist to vice president? By being indispensable. It'd be much more pleasant to be indispensable to you. They've overcharged you one dollar and twelve cents. Oh, sure. Melissa, I don't know what I'd do without you. See what I mean? I now go to the supermarket, Miss Trent. Oh, that won't be necessary, Peter. I've ordered the groceries for the week. They'll be delivered. I not go to the supermarket for a whole week? You might use the spare time to cut back that bamboo from the patio gate. <laughs> Please, Kelly, where Mr. Gray? Peter, I want... Have you seen what Miss Trent has done to my room? No good, huh? <laughs> Terrific. All my ties lined up according to color gradation. My winter clothes separated from my summer clothes, all moth sprayed. And when I want a pair of socks, I don't have to go into my pajama drawer. That's fine. I quit. Come on. And I may move in with Ginger. Nah, darling. Just look at these pamphlets. Memory association. How to dress on a budget. Making spare time pay. I like my spare time. A practical Honey, no, approach no, no, to... Please, no, not so loud. Now, look. Now, up to now, we've been a pretty disorganized crew. And Miss Trent is just trying to help us run a taut ship. Why should you have to drop anchor in my kitchen? <laughs> Come on, family, be tolerant. She's, she's really a wonderful girl. Peter, are you serving this chicken tonight? Never served same chicken two nights in a row. Get thrown out of houseboys' union. <laughs> Peter, I'm surprised at you. The Chinese have 130 ways of preparing chicken. You're thinking of a duck. <laughs> I'll send you one of our pamphlets on it. Kelly, Kelly, dear, is this yours? Yes, it has a couple of moth holes in it. I'm going to throw it away. May I suggest a hobby? Weaving can be a lot of fun. <laughs> Weaving? Hmm. I'll make you a present of a beginner's loom and send you one of our pamphlets on how to use it. <laughs> Weaving? Is that all you can say, dear? <laughs> oh, no. Thank you. And thanks loads. Melissa, you're wonderful. Giving up a Saturday to help us. I tell you... I don't know what I'd do without you. <laughs> you just said it again.